this is Joyce Polino Crane. I'm the news director at Westford Cat, and today is a marathon day on our Article 16 for annual town meeting, which is coming up on March 23rd. We're taping on March 15th, and um, I'm here with Bob Krankowitz, who is um, strongly opposed. I'd say strongly would be the right word, right? Yes. Strongly opposed to the the development of. 68, 6668 Boston Road, the nine acre parcel, better known as Drew Gardens. And you're here today, Bob, to tell us why you're opposed um, from the legal perspective of the, of the matter. You've done a lot of research, um, probably most of it over my head, but I'm gonna do my best to keep up with you. So where do you wanna begin? Well, I'd like to begin with the letter that was sent uh March uh, 23rd, I believe it was, uh, in 19, uh, 2017, just before the previous uh, annual town meeting. Basically, that letter uh, tells... A letter from who? It's a letter from the uh, Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. They are a, a cabinet post. They, they, it's, it's quite a high r ranking in the, in the pecking order of, of Massachusetts government. They report to the governor. They are a very extremely powerful group of people, and uh, they work also with um, the attorney general. Mm -hmm. And this is with regard to the APR itself, or APR three. I think, without go initially, without going into the letter itself, I would say first of all what an APR is. So an agricultural preservation restriction exactly is what 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 does it restrict? It restricts the development rights of the property. Basically, everything that's done on the property has to be geared towards producing agricultural products. Um, it also restricts any buildings, like say, for example, a restaurant. Right, well, anything bigger than the footprint of what's existing exactly. there now. Exactly, and, and the footprint that exists now, which is allowed by the APR, because it was written into the APR, is the farm stand. It's a very small unit. I forget how many square feet, um, 4,000 maybe, 4,000 square feet. As everybody's seen the building, it is not a large building compared to what they want to put on that APR. Now, the argument the state does is basically the purpose of the APR is to preserve agricultural land and by so doing they are improving saving the land for environmental reasons and in Westford we've lost so much I mean Westford use, mainly was many years ago apple farms other farms we have Gould Farm we have that APR down there on, on uh, Boston Road and then we have um, various horse farms that are around. And that's well, we have it. Hill Orchard, which is still and, 23 acres. And Hill Orchard, thank you. Um, and, and Mr. Boney has his private uh, uh, um, apple orchard also, which is 31 acres, if I believe. On, on Tad McRoad. Tad McRoad. Yes. Um, I just want to make it clear to our viewers that you're talking about the, par the nine acre parcel at 68668 68 Boston Road, which was divided into three. Um, separate APRs exactly uh, in the late 90s um, so and there are still many people in town who were involved in preserving that land um, who want to see it remain preserved and not developed exactly exactly what I'd like to do now is, is go into the letter from the uh, Executive Office of Environmental uh, Energy and Environmental Affairs okay and what was the date of that letter that letter, I believe, is uh, f uh, March uh, 23rd, 2017. And is this the paragraph you want to talk about? Yeah. The um, Exe Executive Office of Environmental and Energy Affairs understands that a vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to amend APR 3 to allow a restaurant and banquet facility is on the warrant for the upcoming town meeting. This was for last go around, March 25th, 2017. Such a, such a change in use contradicts the intent and purpose of the APR and would constitute an unauthorized release. E-O-E-E-A, which is the acronym for uh, the, uh, the state agency, state agency mm -hmm. cautions that the town of Westford 
to carefully review this matter before taking any action inconsistent with Article 97 of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and additional protections afforded by the state law. Now, in this, in this letter, there's reference to an original correspondence. And there's another paragraph here, which is also important. And it refers to the st giving standing to the commissioner of agriculture. And he was received standing um, when the APR was created in 1999. And we're talking about John Lebeau? John Lebeau, Lebeau he was the commissioner, of exactly. Of agriculture. And uh, he set it up when he saw the writing, the, the wording. What happens was, and our town council and also the lawyer for um, uh, Mr. Masaladon, the developer. The, you mean the current lawyer, Michael O'Neill? Uh, or the former lawyer. I don't know. I don't know who's. I'm not sure which him. lawyer it is now, to, to be honest. Okay. Uh, it, but it was the lawyer that represented him at uh, the last board of selectmen meeting uh, a few nights ago. Yeah, that's Tuesday, Michael. Michael O'Neill. Michael O'Neill, and they're maintaining that the uh, um, commissioner of agriculture has no standing in, in in this situation. And normally, the way these APRs are done, there, as a matter of fact, Mr. Boney has one, and he the, the state owns the uh, APR on his property, 31 mm -hmm. acres. Mm -hmm. Ours was done by the town. The town basically owns it. However, someone requested w way back when, this would be um, 1999, I believe it might have been April of 99, whatever, but it was in 1999, just after the APRs were put together. And uh, he looked at the APR, and the way the APR is constructed, it is such that in perpetuity, it will always be kept in agricultural use. There will be no buildings built on there other than what is there, the farm stand. So let's just tell our viewers that um, the town paid Keith Boney, who was the owner of the property, and his wife, Na his wife at the time, Nancy Boney, $525,000 for all three, um, for all nine acres. Um, what the town did was retain the first, the right of first refusal. Exactly. The development rights. Right. And what's the third one? Um, producing agricultural um, products on on the property. Basically. Okay, I don't think that's. Uh, well, it'll come to me. But so the town has held on to the development rights and the right of first refusal, and. Um, the value of what those rights are, um, or if if they were if they were to be if the uh, APRs were to be amended, or one APR was to be amended, I think a lot of people are wondering well, what be, what becomes the value of that piece of property. Uh, well, that's where the problem comes. What the whole idea behind the APR setup system throughout the state is to keep agricultural land at a value that a farmer can afford to buy it. Um, the way it is set up is by the Commissioner of Agriculture signing off on it because it does in perpetuity prevent destroying this property at all. What's gonna happen with a restaurant complex here, if you put it on there, uh, it will n essentially not enable any kind of agricultural uh, use of the property which is against the contract. Basically, the APR is a legal contract, and it will uh, short-circuit that contract in that um, they're violating the law because it has st statutory restriction. The statutory restriction that has been created by the commissioner recognizing that property is that it has protection from the state to make sure that, that the environment in that particular case is not destroyed. And that's what it's going to derogate. By putting a restaurant there will derogate the possibility of agricultural use. Now the counter argument to that is that the land has never been used because of the soil, poorness of the soil. But the soil can be regenerated. It just, it's going to cost some money. But well, I just spoke with Keith Boney and um, that, that air, APR3, the gravel um, 
was sold um, for the uh, construction of Interstate 495. 495 yeah. So it's it would take quite a bit, is what Keith said. To you know, uh, I don't think you can. Re I don't know if you can really repair it without well, you putting quite a bit of you money can. into it. No, you, yeah, you'd have to put a lot of money. And as a matter of fact, Mr. Masaladon has done nothing over the last three and a half years. He's supposed to be acti actively producing um, agricultural goods. Well, I, I would like to say that, um, according to Ebby, he's put um, close to $80,000, I think was the number I heard at the selectmen's meeting, but he has put money into the land. It doesn't, it may not show because it's things like loom or taking down the dilapidated greenhouse in the very back of, of the land, but there has been some work done on the land. Okay, let's get back to the agricultural secretary. And the sure. reason why I wanna go back to that is because because of the way the uh, APR is laid out, he approved it. One of the things, the protections that they get for this is the state wants to keep that land able to be used in agricultural use. The restaurant, according to the uh, um, Commissioner of Agriculture, is not a, an agricultural use. It's a commercial adventure. And basically the state, and this comes out in the Memorandum of Understanding from the Massachusetts Land Trust Coalition, a memorandum created by seven very well-known and very up-to-date uh, environmental lawyers who basically went through and analyzed the same thing, supported the position that the uh, uh, commissioner had made. By having that APR, we are supported by the state, and the state will protect us. And what do I mean by that? And this is the warning that comes out of uh, the letter from the uh, executive secretary from EOEEA, is that it gives, the, it gives the attorney general standing to take the town to court if they do not abide by, if they change a use, that would be putting a restaurant on there is what the commissioner has said is a change of use. A change of use basically releases the APR now, he has not been, since he approved it, it, they need to go back to him if they decide to vote this in. They need to go back to him to get approval from him, which he will not grant because he says a restaurant is not an agricultural use. So there's a protection that we get because we have a state-recognized restriction on that property. It's called a statutory restriction. Now, take it one more step. The attorney general can be, has standing because if that restaurant is put there, it will basically derogate that APR to such a point that there will be no possibility of any uh, growth ever, even if, you know, it, to, to recover that land for agriculture. And it's a negative impact on the whole APR system that the state has set up, which is to protect the environment. So that's the standing. Also, 10 citizens can take a case to superior court for the same basic reason, that it's doing harm to the environment. Do you, do you think some people in Westford w would do that? Do you think that would happen? Oh, yeah. I, I, know, mm -hmm. I know a group of people that uh, I believe would... Uh, are ready to go? Are ready to go for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, have been working, we have been working tirelessly. Uh, w some of us were uh, uh, on the uh, task force, got ourselves onto the task force. Uh, we've been working on this stuff. I've been involved with this for over three years. Right. And I, 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 I want to point out the other thing that's extremely important, uh, and this is the ending part of the executive secretary's letter where he cautions the town. And why he's, he's saying he's cautioning the town to, to take any action inconsistent with Article uh, 97 of the Constitution and additional uh, protections provided by state law. Chapter uh, 184 of the Mass General Law, section 31 to 33 is what's all involved. 97, uh, Article 97 of the Commonwealth comes involved because there's a change of use. If they take that APR, number three, and put a restaurant on there, it's definitely a change of use. So that will lead to legal action. Illegal outlets. The last comment I have to make is that area, all three of the APRs, there are two basic parcels underneath those APRs and they're in a residential zone. 
Our zoning bylaws do not allow commercial endeavor in uh, a residential zone. Mm -hmm. And they could, seek a, they could seek a variance. Let's say the uh, ZBA gives them a variance. Right. This but they're still going to end up with a restaurant, and that's against the law. Well, so just to clarify, even if town meeting um, voters approved the uh, proposal of a restaurant, the project would still have to go before the planning board and the zoning board of uh, appeals. Um, so it, this farm to table restaurant would, is still far away in mm. terms of any kind of um, approvals. Yeah, but it was re it's recommended. The last time we did a, a go around on it, um, we it was turned down um, by a vote of 400 to 200, give or take a few. Mm -hmm. And the other the other factor is um, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Well, that's okay. Um, we're about to wrap up, and we'll. Um, if you have any last parting words to the residents of Westford, this is your moment. Well, I say again, I mean, do we want to go to court to resolve this or do we want to vote it? We could vote it down here at the town meeting coming up uh, next Saturday. And that's what I would recommend. Um, I think um, adjudicating this in court is not the answer because basically it's laid out how the state intends to try to preserve that pr property. I mean, a restaurant seems like a great idea. Oh, it'll, it'll clean up the area, but that's an awfully expensive thing. It also challenges the whole idea of saving agricultural land in a community for the state of Massachusetts. And on top of that, it also has further implications throughout the country. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. So um, I will see you at town meeting on March 23rd, opens at 10 a.m at the Abbott School, and I hope to see all of you at town meeting as well. March 23rd, 10 a.m., Abbott School. For Westford Cat, this is Joyce Polino Crane saying, see you around town. <laughs>